All right, YouTube, it's time for DIY stereo install part two. So I got a little legwork done this week um, and got a few things done. I want to show you what I've accomplished so far. So let's start off with the bar that uh, will go across the back. It turned out pretty good. Um, running my lines through and over and then down and around as soon as I get this done that should turn out pretty good one of the things that I am doing to all my wiring ahead of time is I am wrapping my wiring in the uh, the PET uh, mesh sleeve all you do is tape the end of that once you're done and you've got a really um, secure line wiring and also uh, something that's uh, pretty well protected. I do not like the plastic tube. That stuff's junk. It looks bad, it, it sounds bad, and it comes apart. And so I always use this. It's, uh, it's inexpensive and you can buy it just about anywhere. So I've wrapped everything. Another thing that I've done is I've got one speaker installed. I'll flip it over in a second and show you. But <clears throat> I have uh, soldered all of my terminals for my speakers and some people may disagree with that because it's easier to maintain them but what I do too is uh, notice I, uh, I wrap a little bit of extra cord right there with my speakers when they're enclosed so that when I need to maintain them I'm not fighting that I'm able to pull it out set it down and work on anything so uh, let me flip this over and show you my first door speaker I think she turned out pretty good. And so those are poke momos that are going in the doors. I've tested the whole system in the house, had it all pre-wired to make sure everything worked. Nothing worse than getting the whole system together and it doesn't either sound good or work. And uh, this one does work. So um, that's what we've done there. I talked to you about mounting. Let's see if we can get that focus. I don't know if you can barely see that nut cert in there. So what I did was I just marked those off as a template and then uh, I used nut certs. And if anybody's never used the nut cert tool, um, it really comes in handy. This is the tool itself. You just screw it on the end and uh, screw it in and then squeeze out. That's going to pull that in and that's going to squeeze the back half of that in. That's going to secure that on the back side against metal. And then there are threads that you screw into. So the easy way to choose these, I'm going to do this with one hand, is I always keep a gauge around for um, drill gauge, a drill bit gauge. So you look and you find the right hole, right? And this happens to be a 3 8 so then you, of course, find a 3 8 bit, test it, check it, um, mark your holes, and uh, go ahead and uh, hammer in and uh, get your start point uh, going, and then drill those out. Put the nut cert in, screw it on, squeeze it, you're done. It's very solid secure. Now I use 6 millimeters here on these. I painted the nuts and uh, washers and uh, I'll be using Loctite on those. I'll be using 8 millimeter nut certs on the uh, the actual uh, roll cage and making sure that these are going to be well secured and again I'm going to make sure I use a um, a thread locker on there. Anyway, so what's next? Oh, got my uh, main uh, RCA cables encapsulated as well uh, don't forget if you do this folks uh, about your turn on wire um, that's your, your uh, AC power wire that uh, turns on your amps uh, when it's connected so uh, I have forgot this more times than I can remember over the years when I've been doing this in my rides and stuff and this time I remembered it and make sure you got enough extra length to wherever that goes to um, this Rockville really sounded good. Um, the Toro amp, I think I've got to go to two amps to really get what I need out of those uh, two subs. 
Uh, tested the two subs last night. It's just not enough, so I'll probably go to the two. I do have the second one there. And uh, I'll be encapsulating all my wiring today. I'm going to go ahead and get my two door um, speakers in and get my... Uh, Hopefully get my top speakers mounted. So that way I've got all four speakers mounted uh, today. And if I've got time, I'll go ahead and get the amps mounted in there. And so stay tuned. I'll, uh, I'll update you probably on this video as well. All right, folks. Got the first speaker in. Two things I realized, which is really good. You do not have to take the door off to get these door speakers in but it was a good exercise in knowing what's behind it for me um, you are going to need to use the half inch spacer rings uh, that you can buy pretty cheaply I think they're like seven eight bucks out there on Amazon because if you do not um, soon as somebody hits that door you're going to bust a speaker an expensive speaker I, I would think that that's probably one of the reasons why the factory aftermarket speakers probably don't sound that great because you can't put a quality one in without expanding into the cabin a little bit. The other thing you're going to need to do is these are the factory screws that came with the speakers and the factory mounting clips. You can use these mounting clips on the inner ring of the, uh, of the door. Uh, the framework of the door has a, a retainer ring that you screw to. And so just get you longer screws. So these are between an inch and a half and an inch and three quarters. I happen to have them around. I've got a big box of them from uh, uh, Harbor Freight, uh, stainless steels that were little of nothing. I always have those on hand. They always work out. And then these clips, just compress these clips with a, um, uh, with a pair of pliers to get them good and flat and tight so that when they go in there, they stay. They don't move around so you can get those screws mounted in there but let's take a look and see what the first speaker looks like mounted in place um looks good yeah it's out just a hair more than uh than the factory ones would be but that cavity let's see how it works i have a knot set in here no not really yeah it hits a little bit but I think it would hit with the other speakers as well. I mean, you're talking a half an inch here. Um, to get a quality speaker in here, like a Momo, uh, they look good. You know, as soon as I put a little armor all on this door afterwards, I think it's uh, really going to look nice. Anyway, on to the next speaker and uh, door speaker. And then later I'll show you where I end up wiring them through. I'm not sure yet. That's next. So update, um, in order to use a jigsaw to cut out that hole on the other side, one of the things I didn't want to do is have that jigsaw go through with the longer blade. So I've marked uh, the longest step that I want to be safe with, and I'm just going to cut that off with a cutoff wheel. And so that's still going to work just fine, and uh, that's going to allow me to, to cut that in. All right, this took a whole five minutes. Um, Used my little template that came with the speaker, cut out the cardboard around it, stuck it in there approximately. Used, uh, if you haven't gotten these before, these Sharpie um, paint pens are awesome to mark things with. Mark the circle, drill the pilot hole, and used old faithful Black & Decker here to... Uh, to cut that out as close to that circle as possible, I have squeezed my clips down and then I'm going to have to unsqueeze them just a hair. And on the inside, you can't see this, I can't really show it to you, but there's an entire frame in here, uh, a speaker frame built into the door itself with the proper mounting holes here. So they're going to match up to this speaker perfectly. This is a, This is probably all told about a about a 20 minute install when it's all said and done. I just made it hard, but it was good for me to see how to get a door apart and the inner workings, how these latches are working, uh, all that stuff. So, um, you know, I'm glad I did to make sure I did it right. So 
that's the scoop here and uh, we'll continue I won't forget to wad up a little bit of extra cable in there and, and black tape it so that again when I need to pull it out later you're not fighting this tight speaker hanging down you're able to pull it out do what you need to do and uh, take a door off if you need to all right folks update got a single fuse running both my amps off of a single large fuse both those amps don't draw enough to cause a problem plus that fuse will blow if something shorts out I am protecting my cables I'm keeping them red up until I get near the amp so that I know that that's a red cable to be careful around it I've run it through the frame and I've just used self tapping screws from Harbor Freight and um, I'm using some plastic sleeves here for them um, that I got from Harbor Freight as well in bulk and uh, run it across and then I'm going to run it up. What I've done up here is I've uh, marked my holes and I'm going to use um, nut starts here as well so that I can safely put it on there. If you use sheet metal screws, wood screws, things like that, it's just going to fall off. Or you're trying to bolt it from the back, it's a pain. But with nut starts, you have four nice screw holes that when you need to take that amp off, you just unscrew four screws. And put them in with some Loctite, uh, some uh, light Loctite, so that they stay there. And now you've got a very secure place for your ramp up there. So I'll show you when I get the nut search done. All right, let's take a look real quick. Looks like it's starting to rain on me. I'll tell you, show you how easy it is to put in a nut search. I've already got this drilled out, but I need to get a little bit more. That's simple. Put it in, squeeze it, undo it, unscrew it, and you have a place to screw in now. I've got four of them in, all done, looks professional, and it's going to be a real solid mounting for that amp. Well she's 90 percent finished um i like the way the back speakers turned out i can pivot them up and down and uh they are bolted on strong zip ties just for the the wiring i decided not to run it through the tubes but i kept them low so that i still have some good visibility they're out of the way uh they tuck down nice and neat I've got them aimed up just a hair right now. And I think she turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have to play around a little bit more. I do not have my sub mounted back there. Not yet. Let's see if we can uh, pull this seat forward. Excuse my craziness here. So there's my amp on the back wall. I'm going to... Put something over the top of this right here uh, to protect it. Um, any ideas, let me know. I've been trying to find some kind of plastic cover that I can screw on and just go over it and maybe go about halfway down or something and that I can take off when I need to adjust things. Uh, in the meantime, I'll probably just uh, put some plastic over it, tuck it in and tape it for now until I come up with a nice permanent solution. All my wiring uh, is tucked in pretty good. Again, my sub is laying loose right now. I just, I need an eight inch, but I have no clue how I'm gonna squeeze an eight inch in here, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And, uh, and I think I'm going to need a stronger amp for that eight inch. Uh, I think I have a 300 and a 10 inch in my X3 and boy does it boom. Uh, doors turned out good. Looks nice. I've got um, one amp in the back of there. You can't see it hardly. It's just it's the back. That's for the sub. I'll probably be changing that out. I have not finished mounting things and tucking a couple of wires. There is my uh, equalizer. I'm playing around with it. It still almost sounds like there could be some distortion. Let me get in the other side here. I'm not real happy with the quality of it yet, so I'm sure I'm going to have to play around like I did with my X3 to get true good sound. 
because I know I have the speakers and I know I have uh, decent amps now it's just a matter of getting the right head unit so what I did was uh, I'm going to replace this with a stereo in green uh, I'm just going to have to get it ordered this is just one I had laying around so when I crank that on everything goes on I don't know if we're going to get to hear anything or not again. I'll be drunk again. all right it's actually the next day I uh, got to playing around last night dialed a lot of things in I'm a lot happier now with it I still got to do something about the sub I'm going to try a little more power and uh, see what happens with it before I go to an 8 inch sub and see if we can't get a little more bass out of this thing. But it's actually coming around. I'm still going to try to put another head unit into this equalizer because there are um, inputs into there and I've got three or four of them laying around and see if that improves the overall quality of the sound a little bit. I mean, but as I've got it dialed in now, it does sound a whole lot better, and I'm a lot happier with it. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're ready to, to, to go soon. We'll be uh, headed out this coming weekend to um, <coughs> probably Sabine. I've got a brother coming into town, so we'll take this and the X3 out. And uh, I may try to haul out my uh, commander there because it is for sale now. And uh, see if I can't get some bites on it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And um, I hope that you share and like this. Take care. Have a great week, guys and ladies.